Hello students, in this lecture we shall study the difference between crystalline solids and amorphous solids. This is uh, NCRT to class 12th chapter 1 solid solids. So we will study what is the difference between crystalline solids and amorphous solids. Now if we see the definition then definition of crystalline solid state that its components components means the constituent particles they may be atoms they may be molecules whatever the constituent particles are held together by uniform molecular forces so as to make a long range ordered arrays that is particles are in regular shape and the solid also has a regular shape and regular repeating three dimensional arrangement of constituent particles. So this is called crystalline solid and in amorphous solids we see that the constituent particles are held together with intermolecular forces so as to make a short range order. Short range order means the order is not repeating that is short range and particles are of irregular shape and amorphous solid are also in irregular shape. So this is the difference definition wise and if we see example, example wise the uh, crystalline solids are uh, like diamond, graphite, quartz and sodium chloride and so on, potassium chloride, they are all examples of crystalline solids and in uh, if we see amorphous solids they are glass, rubber, plastics etc. These are the examples of amorphous solids. Now if we say shape, the crystalline solids have definite geometric shape like they may be hexagonal, they may be have pentagon or cubo, cube, cubic. So the, the, they have definite geometric shape and in case of amorphous solid they don't have any regular shape, they are having irregular shape. Another point of difference is heat of fusion. What is heat of fusion? Heat of fusion is the heat required to convert the solid state into liquid state. So the heat required is fixed in case of crystalline solids but they do not have definite heat of fusion because they have range of heat means the heat required does not have any definite value. They have range of heat at which the uh, solid is uh, fused. And the other point of difference is melting point. The crystalline solids are having sharp melting point. So suppose we say that a melting point of a solid is 500 Kelvin. Then we see that all of the, all of the solid is melted at a temperature of 500 degree Kelvin. But what happens in case of amorphous solids, they gradually melts over a range of temperature. Means they don't have any fixed temperature at which they melt, but they have range of temperature. Means say uh, they melt at uh, 400 to 450 degree Celsius. So this is called a range of temperature at which they are melting. So in this case, they are also called pseudo solids. Why? Because amorphous solids have a tendency to flow, though it is very slow. They have tendency to flow because as the temperature will rise, they will have more tendency to flow. So they are called pseudo solids or supercooled liquids. Supercooled liquids means if a liquid is cooled at a temperature below the melting point, then it will be it will be converted into amorphous solids. So they are also called supercooled liquid. We will, uh, uh, we will, I will explain it by a help of some examples at the end of the lecture. So this is the temp, uh, this is the difference. And now the other difference is cleavage property. Difference in cleavage property. What is cleavage property? Cleavage property is the when the solid is cut with a sharp tool then what how they behave 
this is called cleavage property the uh, crystalline solids uh, uh, when they are cut with a sharp tool they are they are not the new generated newly generated surfaces are plain and smooth because when we cut a solid the uh, new uh, new surfaces are generated and they are plain and smooth but in case of amorphous solids the newly generated pieces are with irregular surfaces they are not regular and they are not smooth and other point of difference is anisotropy again this is very interesting and very important also anisotropic means the some of the physical properties in crystalline solids like electrical resistance refractive index and so on they show different values in different directions why because in different directions the number of constituent particles the direction of the constituent particles they are different why different because they are arranged in a long repeating order but when we change the direction we change the direction through an angle what happens number of constituent particles they are changed and as the number of constituent particles and their arrangement changes the these physical properties electrical resistance and refractive index they are also have they also have different values because different arrangement of particles in different direction but in case of amorphous solids what they are isotropic what is isotropic that is physical properties are same in all directions why because there is no long range order in the amorphous solids and arrangement is irregular so the average number of particles along all the directions they remain the same and these physical properties are same throughout the throughout all the directions so they are called isotropic in nature now another point of we will discuss it in our next class anisotropy how the crystalline solids are anisotropic and amorphous solids are isotropic this we will this we will explain this we will learn in our next class now the nature nature wise they crystalline solids are two solids two solids means they have sharp regular shape sharp melting point they have sharp heat of fusion so they are two solids but in case of amorphous solids they are pseudo solids pseudo solids means they don't have any sharp melting point or any uh, sharp heat of fusion etc and they don't have any arrangement of constituent particles so they are pseudo solids and super cooled liquids they are super cooled liquids so we will study this difference by help of some examples let us take the help of some examples see this is example number 1 a solid melted over a 10 degree celsius range say from 70 degree c to 80 degree c means the solid is a amorphous solid this is a amorphous example of amorphous solid what is amorphous solid because its melting point is not fixed is not definite it is a range of temperature it starts melting at the temperature of 70 degree c and gradually melts over the range of temperature now after melting after all the solid has melted it cool down and again form the solid again now the melting point was again taken and it was found that now the melting point is sharp at a fixed temperature say 75 degree c then what happens this is converted into crystalline solid why how it has 
because when it has melted amorphous solid has melted so before melting it it has irregular arrangement short range order arrangement of particles in short range order but what happens after melting and cooling again the particles are arranged in a long range order because they form they they form in uh, solid solid uh, they become solid by having a long range order of particles by after cooling it down so uh, gradually they are cooled and they form a crystalline lattice they have long range order so that solid has has converted from amorphous to crystalline solid and hence the melting point is fixed now another example is what happens when a molten sio2 is cooled rapidly at degree of 4 kelvin per second so what happens when this molten sio2 because sio2 freezed sio2 means quartz that is a crystalline crystal crystalline solid but what happens when we melt it and cooled it rapidly by a temperature of 4 kelvin by the uh, per, uh, per second means in one second it is cooled by a temperature of 4 kelvin it is cooled rapidly then what happens they the constituent particles do not get enough time to be arranged in a crystal lattice in a crystal order in long range order hence they are converted into amorphous solid so if the solid amorphous solid after melting is allowed to cool gradually or slowly then it will convert into a crystalline solid because the constituent particles will get enough time to be arranged in a long range order and if the crystalline solid is mel melted and they are cooled rapidly then they will be converted into amorphous solid because the constituent particles will not get enough time to be arranged in a long range order as uh, now i think this is a so this uh, uh, okay. amorphous solids are also called super cooled liquids because they are cooled molten state of the solid is cooled very rapidly they are called super cooled liquids and now i think it is uh, this point is also clear and in our next class we will study that why the crystalline solids are anisotropic in nature thank you for watching the video